Iran's mountainous borderlands are a dangerous place in winter, but some people have no choice. I come to this decision that I would, I would really need to go. Braving the revolutionary guards, bandits and avalanches, Camille Ahmadi made his desperate bid for freedom using smugglers' trails like these. Even though it's, uh, it would be very dangerous for me to, to act on it, and if I fail, it would be even worse. But then I made the decision and I escaped. Mr. Ahmadi spoke to Channel 4 News from the safety of London, having just escaped what would have been a nine-year sentence in Tehran's notorious Evin prison. His nightmare started in the summer of 2019. I came back, going back to Iran via London, and then uh, the next day I was arrested. I was picked up at home. 16, 16 men just stormed the house, and I was... Mm, charged under Section 508, cooperation with the hostile states of America. A week before his arrest, British troops had impounded an Iranian oil tanker near Gibraltar. The Revolutionary Guards then retaliated by seizing a British vessel in the Persian Gulf. During the interrogation, I found out that some of the questions actually is about the oil tanker, although it had nothing to do with me. I specifically remember one day my uh, chief interrogator just, just came in and then so happy, so you could see the, the, the smile and the grin in his face, saying, well, thank you very much, Camille, for the help that you, you as a British person, uh, gave the Islamic Republic of Iran. And I said, so what, what, what do you mean by this? He said, well, we just got our ship back. And thank you, so you really made a difference. And then at that moment, is. I really got it. I think there was a point. There was a point uh, to see myself as a dual national. Just again, old, rusty story of dual nationals being, being pictured and, and framed into a whole bigger game which had, they had nothing to do with it. Mr. Ahmadi was sent to Tehran's Ebin prison, where other British-Iranian dual nationals, including Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe, and Anoushe Ashuri were also being held. Here, the Revolutionary Guards subjected him to so-called white torture. You're blindfolded at all time, and then you, you hear it like the, the guards are closing or locking the door, and then someone will just tell you behind the door so you can lift your uh, blindfold. So when you lift it up, I... I, I so a small room, it was almost like a grave. And um, there, is, there is this very strong projectors uh, on, on top of you, had 24 hours a day, so it's extremely bright. Uh, and, and really you can't sleep during the night. There is a small window type in your, in your door designed for, um, just, just for food. It opens up, there's a hand of a human being, it just comes in with, it, with, with your food and, and perhaps a tea or a, a glass of water. And then that's the only connection that you have to the outside world. Um, so the only lifeline, uh, the only entertainment that you have is when you are actually taken out for, for interrogation. Uh, and and uh, it, it is just so pity because <laughs> the, uh, you, you just wish to be interrogated more and more so because that's the only human contacts that you have. You don't want to go to your cell because, because you're terrified and there's all this phobia. Don't, don't want to go back over there. And, and it, it, it comes to a point that you, you start shouting, your heart is begin to pound and then there's so much of, of like uh, phobia of this little place that you, you feel this, there, is, there is no oxygen, there is no air to breathe. And it's not one day, there's not two days, it's not one week, it's not one month, and it just goes on and on and on. And you just becoming, becoming mentally, mentally disabled, insensitive to your, to your, to your environment. That's, that's what the solitary confinement is. Incredibly, after a hundred days in Evan, Mr. Ahmadi was released on bail, pending sentencing and an appeal but the judge gave him nine years, three months. With a simple calculation, I, I just realized my, my son would be 
near, near to 15 years old. What was I in these 10 years in Avin? He would have just been a boy coming to, to see me for half an hour every two weeks or on the phone with like uh, no emotional connection uh, whatsoever. Faced with this, Miss Ahmadi and his family were smuggled across the border and made their escape to the one place in the world he knew they'd be safe. I didn't escape to somewhere that I didn't know. I came back to the place that I also have a sense of belonging to, my big part of my identity. Um, it's here. Um, I was brought up here in this beautiful multicultural society. So I'm, I'm coming back home to my other home, but I was forced out of a place that I, I felt that I can make a difference.